Hare Krishna everyone, welcome back to the reading of Teachings of Lord Chaitanya by His Divine Grace Srila A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. We're reading the preface, continuing. Mm -hmm. So yesterday we stopped at the point where Prabhupada said that one can purify the activities of the mind, mind and senses by change in consciousness. This change is indicated in the Bhagavad Gita 2.39 where Krishna tells Arjuna of the knowledge of yoga whereby one can work without fruitive results. Quote, o son of Pritha, when you act in such knowledge, you can free yourself from the bondage of works. Unquote. A human being is sometimes restricted in sense gratification due to certain circumstances, such as disease, but such prescriptions are for the less intelligent. Without knowing the actual process by which the mind and senses can be controlled, less intelligent men may try to stop the mind and senses by force, but ultimately they give in to them and are carried away by the waves of sense gratification. The eight principles of Sankhya Yoga Observing the regulative principles, following the rules, practicing the various sitting postures, performing the breathing exercises, withdrawing one's senses from sense objects, etc., are meant for those who are too much engrossed in the bodily conception of life. The intelligent man, situated in Krishna consciousness, does not try to forcibly stop his senses from acting. Rather, he engages his senses in the service of Krishna. No one can stop a child from playing by leaving him inactive. Rather, one can stop the child from engaging in nonsense by engaging him in superior activities. Similarly, the forceful restraint of sense activities by the eight principles of yoga is recommended for inferior man. Superior man being engaged in the superior activities of Krishna consciousness naturally retire from the inferior activities of material existence. In this way, Lord Chaitanya teaches the science of Krishna consciousness. This science is absolute. Dry mental speculators try to restrain themselves from material attachment, but it is generally found that the mind is too strong to be controlled and that it drags them down to sensual activities. A person in Krishna consciousness does not run this risk. One therefore has to engage one's mind and senses in Krishna conscious activities. And Lord Chaitanya teaches one how to do this in practice. Before accepting sannyasa, the renounced order, Lord Chaitanya was known as Vishwambara. The word Vishwambar refers to one who maintains the entire universe and who leads all living entities. The very same maintainer and leader appeared as Lord Sri Krishna Chaitanya to give humanity these sublime teachings. Lord Chaitanya is the ideal teacher 
of life's prime necessities. He is the most, the most munificent bestower of love of Krishna. He is the complete reservoir of all mercy and good fortune. Jai! This is so <laughs> inspiring, isn't it? As confirmed in Srimad Bhagavatam, the Bhagavad Gita, the Mahabharat, and the Upanishads. He is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna himself, and he is worshipable by everyone in this age of disagreement. Everyone can join in his Sankirtana movement. No previous qualification is necessary. Just by following his teachings, anyone can become a perfect human being. Anyone who is fortunate enough to be attracted by Lord Chaitanya is sure to be successful in his life's mission. In other words, those who are interested in attaining spiritual existence can easily be released from the clutches of Maya by Lord Chaitanya's grace. Now presented in the book form, in the book form, as teachings of Lord Chaitanya, which is none different from the Lord. The conditioned soul engrossed engrossed in the material body increases the pages of history by all kinds of material activities. <laughs> teachings of Lord Chaitanya can help the members of human society stop such unnecessary and temporary activities and be elevated to the topmost platform of spiritual activities, which begin after liberation from material bondage. Such liberated activities in Krishna consciousness constitute the goal of human perfection. The false prestige one acquires by attempting to dominate material nature is illusory. Illuminating knowledge can be acquired from teachings of Lord Chaitanya. And by such knowledge, one can advance in spiritual existence. Everyone has to suffer or enjoy the fruits of his activity. No one can check the laws of material nature that govern such things. As long as one is engaged in fruitive activity, one is sure to be baffled in all attempts to attain the ultimate goal of life. I sincerely hope that by understanding teachings of Lord Chaitanya, human society will experience a new light of spiritual life, which will open the field of activity for the pure soul. Om Tat Sat A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami 14th of March 1968, the birthday of Lord Chaitanya, Shri Shri Radha Krishna Temple, New York, New York City, NY. Prologue The Life of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu by Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur. In brackets, this account originally appeared in a short work by Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur entitled Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, His Life and Precepts on August 20, 1896. Mm -hmm. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu 
was born in Mayapur, in the town of Nadia, just after sunset on the evening of the 23rd Falguna 1407 Shakabda, answering to 18th of February 1486 of the Christian era. The moon was eclipsed at the time of his birth, and the people of Nadia were then engaged, as was usual on such occasions, in bathing in the Bhagirati with loud cheers of Haribo. Haribo! His father, Jagannatha Mishra, a poor Brahmana of the Vedic order, and his mother, Shachi Devi, a model good woman, both descended from Brahmana stock originally residing in Silhet. Mahaprabhu was a beautiful child, and the ladies of the town came to see him with presents. His mother's father, Pandita Nilambara Chakravarti, a renowned astrologer, foretold that the child will be a great personage in time, and he therefore gave him the name Vishwambar. The ladies of the neighborhood styled him Gaurahari on account of his golden complexion, and his mother called him Nimai on account of the Nima tree near which he was born. Beautiful as the lad was, everyone heartily loved to see him every day. As he grew up, he became a whimsical and frolicsome lad. After his fifth year, he was admitted into a Pathashala school, where he picked up Bengali in a very short time. Most of his contemporary biographies have mentioned certain anecdotes regarding Chaitanya, which are simple records of his early miracles. It is said that when he was an infant in his mother's arms, he wept continuously, and when the neighboring ladies cried Haribo, he used to stop. Thus, there was continuation of the utterance of Haribo in the house, foreshowing the future mission of the hero. Haribo, the holy names. It has also been stated that when his mother once gave him sweetmeats to eat, he ate clay instead of the food. His mother, asking for the reason, he stated that as every sweetmeat was nothing but clay transformed, he could eat clay as well. His mother, who was the consort of a pandita, explained that every article in a special state was adapted to a special use. Earth, while in the state of a jug, could be used as a water pot, but in the state of a brick, such a use was not possible. Clay, therefore, in the form of sweetmeats was usable as food, but not clay in its other states. The lad was convinced and admitted his stupidity in eating clay and agreed to avoid the mistake in the future. Another miraculous act has been related. It is stated that a brahmana on pilgrimage became a guest in his house, cooked his food and read his grace with meditation on Krishna. In the meantime, the lad came and ate up the cooked rice. The brahmana, astonished at the lad's act, cooked again at the request of Jagannatha Mishra. The lad again ate up the cooked rice while the brahmana was offering the rice to Krishna with meditation. The brahmana was persuaded 
to cook for the third time. This time, all the inmates of the house had fallen asleep and the lad showed himself as Krishna, the traveler, and blessed him. The Brahmana was then lost in ecstasy at the appearance of the object of his worship. Jai. It has also been stated that two thieves stole away the lad from his father's door. And we shall read about this tomorrow. So thank you so much for tuning in today. The link to this book is in the description and we shall see you next time. Hare Krishna. These are all pastimes which are like so nectarian and so sweet and so beautiful and the Lord's glories are they are infinite and you can discuss them forever and this particular pastime of the brahmana it just uh, it's described in great detail in chaitanya bhagavata chaitanya bhagavata was written by vrindavan das thakur and commented by bhaktisiddhanta saraswati thakur it's just so sweet yes yes so we shall continue tomorrow i just remembered all these pastimes we had uh, made dramas about them back in moscow i especially remember in 2006 i was playing krishna and i was i was 12 wait i was 11 i was 11 years old i was playing krishna and we played this pastime when the brahmana was offering meditating on the lord and little Nimai comes and eats everything up and the Brahmana was like, why you spoiled the offering? And then the boy transforms into Krishna and the Brahmana is like, this is my Lord, my worshipable Lord. And in Chaitanya Bhagavat it is revealed that Nimai already manifested himself as Krishna tells the Brahmana that, you know, these are our eternal pastimes, that in Vrindavana you are a Brahmana and I am your Lord as Krishna, the cowherd boy, and right now you're the Brahmana and I'm little Nimai disturbing you, your offering, and it's just Krishna Chaitanya. So tomorrow we, sh we will read this pastime about two thieves. We also made a drama about it, it was also nice. Yes, okay, so Nectar has, the truck of Nectar has arrived, this book will be <laughs> like that. So Hare Krishna. <laughs>